Hello again and welcome to an interview with DJ Nocturna. It's always an honor and a pleasure to have on my show uh, the singer, guitarist from the Happy Mondays, as well as the supergroup Liz Vega, which he founded with the legendary bass player dismissed, Andy Rourke. I got Cav Sandu. Hi, Cav. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, good, good. Thank you so much for joining me on the on the show. So it's an honor to have you. I've been wanting to to meet you and and actually talk about Blitz Vega. You know, I'm so great. I'm so glad that we were able to do this now. But um, yeah, well, well, well thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, first of all, you know, um, my deepest condolences, you know, to you and uh, you know, for for the passing of Andy, you know, and the great Andy Rourke, the legendary bass player and uh, truly. A, a remarkable artist and uh, irreplaceable, you know, beyond words. Yeah. No, he 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 was um, yeah the most um, fantastic, incredible, um, just musician and person I think um, I've just ever had the opportunity to work with, and also Paul, yeah. you know, a very very good friend and. Um, it's um it's it's something that just leaves a really huge um you know hole in you know um our hearts or anyone who knew him you know anyone he touched i think he just he just he was just a really humble decent guy and um you know it's um sometimes it you know people lose people there's so many people we all lose people and um it's it's difficult but yeah, it's um, it's really sad, and um, we're just trying to do the um right thing as far as everything he wanted, and that's kind of where um my main focus is at the moment. So I just kind of um threw, threw myself into um um focusing on the Blitz Vega music that hasn't been released. So. He, oh. he really wanted it to be released and and it was really important to him because he worked on this for seven years um and over the seven years we were working in the studio um obviously he was he was sort of battling his illness all the way through that time but until sort of the last few months of his life he didn't show any signs of it stopping him you know, he would fly over to LA from New York where we were based, where the band was formed and where we worked in the studio. And, you know, he, he wouldn't let you know how he was feeling or what he was going through. He was just just so happy to be in the studio writing and recording this Blitz Vegas stuff. So, you know, um, we knew and that's why we couldn't play many shows. We only played three times live as a as a band and every time we arranged a tour then he would be dealing with um the illness would would get worse so we weren't able to play live so we sort of just accepted that you know the best thing we can do is just create and create uh music and just enjoy that process so those the last seven years were just so special to work with him and i mean i knew him for 20 like 23, 24 years, but um, working with him for the last seven years was just just one of the greatest honours of my, um, just my life, really. So I just, you know, it was very special. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I know you guys had a deep connection in chemistry, or you, you I mean, you created this project, right? This super group, Blitz Vega, which you, was, was it night 2019 when you launched the, 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 the project, right? Yeah. And yeah, officially it was launched in 2019, but we actually started recording together um, at the end of 2016. So, so before we even had a name, we were we were in the studio um, writing and recording, and um, it was his suggestion to start the band because at first it was going to be he was just coming over to LA and recording on my solo stuff, and then once we got through two or three songs. He was like, you know, we should just start a band, and um, and we. So it was like, yeah, great. You know, you, you're in a band with Andy Rock. You know, Andy Rock's <laughs> just, uh, yeah, he's a friend, and yes, I knew him, but to me, he was, he was just, 
you know, some just another level when it comes to a musician, a bass player. So, yeah. um, so yeah, I, I, I mean, then we started the band, and you know, he he really enjoyed it, and and it was more of a fun kind of band. It was a band that we just we would go in the studio and just make the music we wanted to make. We didn't really think about everything else, you know, or how successful or whatever, you know, the music would be. It was more to do with just, you know, enjoying the process of recording and writing together and working together. You know, I remember the the one of the first singles, it, it could be the first single, Hey Crystal. It was yeah. like, well, then, uh, I, I played that on my show a few times, you know, I think he gave me a copy. Or something like that. Oh, wow. then, uh, oh, yeah, wow. yeah. This is way back when I had the other radio state uh, radio show at KTUH. And I know is that now I found out it's a true story. It's actually like yeah. a person, right? Yeah, that's right, Christo. There was uh he was um well he's he's still around. Um he he was um a guy living in uh, northern California. Um and um he was sort of like um I suppose you could call him a UFO hunter in a way, yeah. but That's someone amazing. who, yeah, um, amazing, a real character. Um, and we we just, I think we watched the documentary. There was a documentary on Netflix, and yeah. we're just so touched by by him, and so it just inspired the song. And we were recording in the studio, and uh, we were working on David Bowie's. Um, um desk mixing desk in Elliot Smith's um studio um old studio and you know it was one of those songs that just came together really quickly and yeah. we just you know we, we recorded it within I think it was a day if that everything was pretty much recorded pretty quickly and uh yeah it was kind of you know that's you the know. thing about Andy you know he always welcomed the strangest things. I mean, he's he 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 didn't he didn't look at people and go, oh, gross. You know, he always like embraced like the unusual, the underdog. You know, he was always he has a good heart like that. You know, um, really big heart. Yeah, yeah. That's a great song, and I know you 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 came out also with um another song which I also played because I'm all about vampires. Oh wow! <laughs> right, yeah, I like vampires. Like vampire. <laughs> that's a great song, yeah. honestly. Oh, cool. Yeah, that was that was just, you know, again, it was um, being in L.A. so much, you know, that kind of inspired us and people around us. And, you know, um, it was just it was more of a just a really fun song. Again, we were just, you know, in the zone and um, inspiration was coming from everywhere. Um, so and, and L.A. Vampire was. Was, yeah. was that because you were in L.A.? Is that why it was called L.A. Vampires? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, we knew we 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 knew a lot of LA vampires, so so um, they inspired us, you know, to write that song. So yeah, and I um, could imagine there was a lot of vampires in LA as well. <laughs> yeah, and no, you know, and the crazy thing is, people think maybe oh, you, you're saying that in a negative way, but we weren't. We were saying it in a positive way because we, just like you just said, you know, Andy was always. You know, he, he loved unusual. He loved people, characters. He loved, um, you know, just kind of, he, he would always have a smirk on his face when we were at a party or something and we'd bump into someone or usually because I was embarrassing myself, which is something that <laughs> I would probably usually do. And, you know, he just loved being around that. Just usually, you know, he had this look on his face and kind of, you know, just always seeing the fun side of, everything you know he did he never held anything against you and um and that was it with the la vampire stuff you know we were we were literally celebrating the la vampires we found them you know enjoyable people to be around so um yeah it wasn't it wasn't like a, um you know taking the mick or anything sort of thing yeah i mean this is this is these are things i've always wanted to you know to to talk about because it's part of andy's legacy right uh the last few yeah you know, years that, and uh, with you, in fact, is, is uh, there's another song, which I, I don't know anything about it. It's called Strong Forever. And I know yeah. that it's released um, on record, on the record store day in that's April right. yeah. this year. It's yeah. like, why not? Anybody, is, I don't know. You know, that's a collectible. Definitely. If anybody's listening out there, uh, you don't. Yeah, it's out there. I think there's a few, uh, I think there's a few, a few thousand out there still. So they're scattered around independent record shops. 
around the you know around the world so uh yeah they're, they're definitely out there so um we've just kind of left them there was the last thing that andy could really see being released um special and we, we yeah it, so it, we were trying also to... with johnny marr guess 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 um guest musician yeah, on the guitar yeah so he was um he he played guitar on the song which is absolutely incredible his guitar part that uh, is just magical and hearing those guys play together um was just you know uh, just really special you know both of them fantastic musicians and obviously brothers friends um going back such a long way and being part of that whole smith's history just two icons and you know that that and that meant a lot to um, Andy, I know, uh, but it also meant a lot to me to, you know, be able to, you know, perform in a song with those guys um, together was, you know, pretty special. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things uh, um, Morrissey did mention, you know, after after Andy's passing was that he would his music would never die. You know, Andy's music would never die. Uh, um, yeah. It's so... You know, a lot of musicians, you know, they can't play like Andy can, you know, especially no. in that way. I mean, many people would try, yeah. but it's just Andy has his own unique way. It was very unconventional in that way. That's one of the things that Morrissey did did say, I recall, and it's very true, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, Andy started playing on like a fretless bass guitar, I think he told me, and which which allowed him to move across the fret for, fretboard on the bass um, very freely. and. Um, I think he said he he didn't really know the keys or the notes and stuff, so he just found his way uh, listening to music and um, by not having any restrictions. I mean, he just, I suppose, I don't know. I mean, it was um, his his bass playing was very unrestricted and just very free, and that was something that when we were writing music and there's a lot of music that hasn't been released you know I thought I thought there was only like maybe 15 songs but then as I keep going through all the hard drives from the studios and stuff I keep finding more demos and tracks and stuff um that we were working on and usually you know we we have this understanding where he would just go with it you know he would just play and I would then kind of do the rhythm guitar stuff around his bass and allow his bass to lead. And then, and then we would then build everything around that. And um, it was, um, you know, it was quite, it, it became difficult for him towards um, the end. You could see um, that when he was um, recording, he, he, he was in a lot of um, pain. So he couldn't um, play maybe as, freely as he did before uh, but but he didn't allow it to affect him because he was never as happy as he was when he was sitting there at the recording studio with a bass guitar so so he just he still played with a smile on his face and kind of really loved loved every moment of it and uh, you know the amount of times he would say to me actually the thing that always rings rings in my head is always him talking about just saying you know if we had interviews or if we had to do some kind of promotion he just he just wanted to be like you know Cav, I just want to play bass that's it that's what I want to do I just want to play bass you know and um tour and play shows so um so the, and record basically so that that was kind of where he was happiest and and so that's what we tried to do but we couldn't do the touring and the playing of shows as much which was you know that's he no, only thing we couldn't do so um yeah i mean but i always just have so many pictures in my head um there's a lot of video as well because we filmed we yeah. filmed like the whole blitz vega journey it's all on film you know yeah it's like so much footage obviously it's it's not it's time to even look at it it's kind of difficult but um but we just know that whole journey is there and you know um um, the director, uh, the guy who was filming a lot of it, just sent me a clip that he'd seen in the studio, and it's just Andy is just in so much sort of 
you know, he's just having so much fun. He's happy, like really yeah, happy. I'm, I'm so glad that you're continuing Bliss Vega. I was going to ask you that, you know, what's what's up, what's going, what's going to happen now to Bliss Vega, but now you're you're saying, and I'm glad. Wow, I'm looking forward to it. Totally am, and I'm so happy you're doing that because I'm sure a lot of people are just waiting for that. You know, they they, they want to know. You know, they want to see it. They want to hear it. They want they want Andy's mem. They want Andy's, you know, legacy to continue. I think, I think I think really it's uh, we're not even sort of really thinking about it. I think he he said to me, um, you know, um, I was with him in New York at the hospital, and um, I mean it was weeks before he passed, and he and he sort of just said to me, he said, you know, you, you're going to carry on, aren't you? And I was like, come on, you know, we can't. I didn't really want, you know, it was just such a you know, he didn't bring up these things with me because he knew that I suppose I'm quite, we, we kind of brushed it under the carpet a lot of the time, you know, it was like an elephant in the room that we just focused on the positives, not not anything that would um, feel like we were overthinking. And that was also a thing for him, you know, I never wanted him to feel uncomfortable. So it was sort of, um, we, we spoke um, towards the end and, and um, he brought it up and he just said, um, you know, I I just really want you to carry on with um with, with Blitz Vega. You need to get out there. You need to take it out there. Uh, you need to promise me that you'll take it out there. So I I I um <laughs> it was just a really weird conversation, and um and then we sort of you know brushed over it and started cracking jokes and sort of moving on from it. Um, but then he sort of gave his notes on the album and the songs he wanted on the album and the running order and how he wanted stuff mixed and he just he just always just he, he just wanted this record to come out so I think all I'm sort of thinking about is as long as I can release this album under Blitz Vega play it play the shows maybe a group of shows you know I know we've got we've got um London on February the 24th the album comes out on February the twenty third. So, and then we we play LA. No, okay. on, um, in February. Uh, on February. Uh, I know. So we play London on February twenty fourth. Um, the album comes out the day before on February twenty third, and then we play the Ace Theatre um, in Los Angeles um, on March twenty second, and then. And then you know th that's all we're we're doing at the moment, and and we might add in like you know mm. a couple of other shows, but it's just to kind of play the songs out live. It's uh you know um and and we'll we'll bring guests in to play you know uh, bass um for the shows and stuff. But wow, uh, yeah, it, I don't know if it'll continue after that as Blitz Vega, but you know we. I just want to release the album, play the songs, and then you know it's kind of like um, it's what Andy wanted. So then at least at least that's kind of you know he he would be happy with that at least. And then well, yeah, you know, just take I, it. I I know that you know you you have his blessings and uh, and I know he's gonna be watching over you. You know you're a good friend to him. You know you've been like there, and uh, I'm sure that he will be there. In spirit that's very kind of you that's very kind of you to say yeah I feel him all the time you know he's kind of you know he's 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 just he's just there he's that you can feel him you know I, I went to the studio for um you know this is it's kind of stuff you don't really it's weird you know you don't really talk about it that much but you know we went to um I went to the studio um a few days after he passed and kind of I was in my head was like, you know, I just need to finish this record. I need to finish this record for Andy. I need to take his notes. I need to finish this record. So I just went in and um, started working on it. But, you know, for two weeks, turned up in the studio and nothing would get done because it was just it, it was it was just, you know, um, it, it just I don't know. Um, so then I kind of thought, you know what, I need to get out of LA and need to come back to England. So I came back to England and and then, um, you know, there was like a few little sort of signs um, that made you feel quite comfortable about, you know, um, 
doing it and remembering and reading the notes he gave me and stuff and then it was like okay cool and then went back and just we we locked ourselves in the studio um will um with, with will kennedy who's our engineer uh co-producer on a lot of the music and and he, he was like a really good friend to me and andy over that whole period he knew the journey that um the band and especially andy was going through so it was just as important to him as well so we got in the studio and we just focused and and we got it done and then suddenly it felt like the al- album finally sounded um how Andy kind of he had a vision of what he thought it would sound like and we would discuss that a lot so so yeah it felt it felt as if we'd we'd finally got there with it um so but but it felt like he was he was in the room um because I think yeah anyway but um yeah so so we felt really good about it and um feel good about it now and I just want to share the music that he was making for all that time. Oh, oh so. my gosh. You know, you know how special that is, you know. And you know, Andy, you know, Andy loves Hawaii, right? He's been here. Yeah. Uh, I met him back in uh 2006 or 2007. He he did uh he performed for an event that I'm I'm still resident of of the of uh, Acid Wash it's called and founder Mike, yeah. Mike Lakata, my Vegas Mike uh, brought him down initially. And uh, it was just a, it was a dream come true, you know, because I'm a big fan of the Smiths. And I go, what? You're bringing who here? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? And then then he <laughs> he DJed an amazing set. You know, everybody was like, whoa, the, like the Smiths is, is, is back in the 80s. You know, I felt that way. And then <laughs> I came here like that was two times. And then I brought him down in 2012 for my other event called 80s Pop Music. And he did an amazing job. Big shout out to um, Francesca, his beautiful wife. Yeah, she's amazing. I, mean, I, I think they just got married in that year. Uh, yeah, but it was. Uh, they love Hawaii, and they always said, "I'm gonna come back." You know, this is like this is paradise. You know, they was we're going to New York, and it's cold, and here we're <laughs> to be living in in Hawaii. And I said, "Yeah, well, move. You're welcome to move back. Just move back anytime." <laughs> just move to Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> I moved to Hawaii, yeah. and I, yeah. I I was hoping yeah. they would come back here. You know, uh, sometime. But of course, oh, well, they, everybody gets busy, right? Yeah, yeah. I I think when he got ill, it's just it took so many people didn't know, you know, because it wasn't something that he wanted to be public knowledge because he wanted to just no. that was just the kind of guy he was, you know. People have different reasons for different things, and and that's he didn't want that attention or people to know. So you know, we 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 were just it was just on the download. It was just obviously a few people knew, and that was it. But um, those years were like, you know, we're talking like, yeah, 2017 onwards, you know, it's a long time. Yeah. Um, so, so. Um, do do you of... have any fond memories? You know, I, I know we're talking about sad things, but um, you have any fond memories, you know, when you're working with him and some of the funny jokes he would crack on. <laughs> I know he he's a funny yeah, guy. He, you know? <laughs> he really he's a really a funny, funny guy. guy. Yeah, really funny. He's like a... He's like a northern British gentleman, you know, in a in a funny way. And he always, he never lost that sense of humour. So he'd always just, you, you know what, there's no particular memory because they kind of all merge into this big mishmash of sort of occasions and just times we had. But one of the most special moments for me was, one of my favourite days with him was he was, he'd come over to LA and I was living in Las Feliz. I, I lived next, I used to live next to Dexy. She was my neighbor and um from Magic Ones. And yeah. so um so Andy, I'd always put him in like, you know, find him in Airbnb or something like around the Las Feliz area where we lived. And so so one day we were just walking around and um there was just this really beautiful bush with flowers kind of grow, like pink flowers um sort of just growing and they just probably just you know it felt as if they just popped out you know and, and it was as if they were sort of smiling at us and you know I, I just said to him I said Andy you know or he said to me I can't quite remember you know oh we need to take a picture you know p- picture of him um to mark the start of the day and so we took that picture. I, I posted it on my Instagram. It's like 
he's um he's sort of standing um yeah in front of these flowers it's on the blitz vega instagram as well but it's just such a beautiful picture you know because it captures everything that he, he's got that smirk on his face where he's smiling just enough that he's thinking something funny or thinks the situation is ridiculous and also it's just I don't know, it just captures something so beautiful. And that day was one of my favourite days. You know, we, we we walked around the neighbourhood just talking and chatting about everything, personal stuff, music, um, going in and out of, like, our favourite spots in the area, bars and, you know, just uh, restaurants and stuff like that. And generally just, you know, walking and talking all day. And it was like a day that lasted, you know, we must have been, hanging out that day for at least eight hours or probably even longer, you know, I don't know. Um, not in the studio. And that, that I always sort of remember that day. And, you know, there's a lot of personal stuff we were discussing, but it was just such a, um, it's a day that I really hold, you know. Uh, so it was a very special, yeah. beautiful day, let's just say. And, um, and you know, I just remember him laughing and smiling so much. He really had a great day. He had a great time. It, it was just Anyway. Yeah, yeah. and that picture reminds me of it so every time I see that picture I'm like you know that was a fantastic day for Andy yeah. as well so yeah he, he really is a beautiful soul I mean really beautiful I, I and I mean that uh because you know you you and I we know him I mean I could I could I could really yeah. say I, I'm, I'm not yeah. just reading this from articles and stuff he really is a beautiful soul no. deep down inside yeah. and um yeah. I guess I'm, I'm really fortunate to have uh known him and met him and uh gosh I, 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 yeah i feel the same you know I, I really feel the same because i mean when i met him when i was 17 in manchester i was like in a young band and you know he came up to me after the show and he was just so so kind and you know just and yeah. we were blown away we were kids we were like wow there's andy rock from the smiths there's so and so from that band or whatever but you know, Andy, like, spent time just chatting and hanging out and, you know, and I felt we connected all that time ago. There was something that it's so weird that all those years later we would actually work together, but we had all these that, um, chance meetings. Was that uh, Get Loaded? Oh, get... way before that. Yeah, oh, no, it was yeah. way before that. Yeah, it was before Get Loaded. Get Loaded, he, he was actually, yeah, he came and him and Mike Joyce, dj together for um um the get loaded event so um bass and drums they came together um that was always fun as well and um so i knew him along around that time um and then actually w when i was joining um the happy mondays he was the first bass player on the list to um recruit as a bassist because um Paul Ryder wasn't playing with the band at the time and I was just joining as a guitarist and that was in 2003 I think mm -hmm. that we were talking about Andy to join but then um, it ended up being another guy uh, Mikey for an old friend of mine but um, yeah that that was when we nearly worked together again and then we just met at Coachella in 2007 and I just fell in love with California at the time and um, I was playing with Happy Mondays and he was DJing. So we kind of hung out after the show and we spoke in 2007. We were like, oh, you know what? Let's let's work together at some point. We just had that sort of vibe. And um, and then, you know, all those years later, 10 years later, basically, we finally did start to work together. So. Yeah, I I know you were uh you know you were talking about Happy Mondays. Right? I know you co-wrote the track, right? Play Playground Superstar. You know? Yeah, yeah. I worked on um a song Playground Superstar, and uh, um there was an album called Uncle Dysfunctional that um yeah. I worked on with them, um which came out I think even recently. It, it was released on um, sort of streaming. Yeah, networks were fairly recently, but before that, it it, it had been released in two thousand seven. So, um, and then it was reissued recently. So, um, yeah. And then, and then you did a, an event. I don't. Is it called Dancing in a Panic? Yeah, yeah. yeah so it, dancing. It, yeah, yeah dancing awesome. in a panic was um was like a sort of uh, a, a kind of um, a British influence sort of club 
club event so we just have djs and bands we had some great bands playing live and mm -hmm. you know it was just a vibe it was just a party it was kind of you know creating that vibe that i did with um my get loaded events back in london it was trying to do that in la as well and um you know andy was a big part of that because he'd come over and dj so yeah yeah, um, yeah. yeah so so that was cool yeah that was pretty cool it was a, it was a good time that was 2016 so that would have been just before we started doing Lex yeah. vega and and i know you started your your solo projects too you have solo projects back in the cab it's simply called cab right yeah and yeah, you, that, your debut EP, which I love that song, Braggers and Liars. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a, <laughs> yeah that was, uh, you know, it was, uh, there was a lot of uh, young energy in that. So uh, back then, you know, um, it, a lot of that stuff was right initially in London and it was rainy and cold and it just had that edge to it. Um, and then, then moving to LA, then I kind of wrote... Um, a lot of um i suppose slightly lighter music but it still had a bit of an edge to it but that was fun i think yeah but but that song came out in showtime right what was that was that uh, yeah 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 it was on oh, yeah. yeah it was on a couple of i think Shameless it was on a couple of shows famous. yeah yeah wow. yeah yeah awesome a, a lot of that stuff was it was kind of like on lots of sporting things and you know tv shows and stuff we, we, we were getting it was getting quite a lot of play and like you know really music led sort of uh, stations uh, I found which is cool and and um but I think you know at some point that's kind of unfinished business for me because um I don't know I, I feel I'm at, in, in a way better place to write a record um now than I was when I was working on that stuff it was just such a crazy time of um just madness there's a lot of madness oh, going yeah. on you were, doing, uh, so, you were doing so many things i mean uh you're also yeah. a dj right you're also a DJ. yeah yeah yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, I mean i mean i wouldn't call myself like a you know amazing dj but um, i like to be like a tune selector i love um i just you know i suppose using that musician knowledge of knowing what works with you know uh sonically you know it's kind yeah. of something that um, so, so it's kind of, yeah, you know, I love being at parties and putting on records. I love that. I, you know, I love sort of finding something that people haven't heard for a while or just introducing what, what, people to what something. What was your DJ name? Or what I just you... Cav. Just Cav. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, did, I didn't really. I, did, I was sort of a re, not reluctant DJ, but I wasn't really planning on it. It was just, I was just playing, some, you know, music out. It wasn't something that I just you know, kind of thought about too much. And then suddenly, you know, people were booking me for DJ sets. And, oh, that's know, great. Yeah, I would love it. I would, yeah, lo I would cool. love to hear your DJ set also. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll do you a DJ set. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe we'll, uh, you know, we'll meet in a club one day and I can, you know, you can DJ for me and I'll DJ for you. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll happen. Yeah. yeah. You know, you yeah. know Dexy and Chris Valentine from Magic Wands, right? They 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 talk highly about you, you know. But Dexy, oh, I love, I love you, you know, Cab. He was my neighbor. Yeah, she did mention that. Yeah, he was my, <laughs> I don't know what year she said, but um, I'm like, really? Oh my god, yeah. yeah. And then we talked for like five minutes, you know. Uh, after, uh, <laughs> we, it wasn't recorded because it was after the interview, but yeah, yeah she goes, yeah, I'll I'll reach out to him. So big shout out to her, and you know she yeah, always, Hawaii, you know that, you know they. She, she did they have a connection to Hawaii. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, they, wow. their, their album, Aloha Moon, is what yeah. I, I, I saw that. And I'm like, Aloha Moon. So when, when she greeted me, she goes, Aloha. <laughs> oh, wow. No yeah. way. Oh, uh, I, I, yeah, I knew that. I knew, uh, I knew the name of the album. I mean, th they're great people, you know. So some of my closest friends in LA, I mean, one of the first people I call when I go back is Dexy. And we, we sort of just... We kind of get each other there's just no we just hang out you know and um and we've seen the funniest sides of each other as well over the years and chris is just chill you know he's just such a great guy to be around exceptional guitar player i love his guitar playing and dexy as well you know her, her songwriting and just, oh, yeah, they're, they're amazing yeah they're really they're, they're great they're, they're, they're genuinely are one of my favorite you know artists and um 
she yeah it was so it was funny living next to her you know it was crazy being her living you know <laughs> just so close to each other so you know we could he hear each other in uh our kitchens and stuff so you know there would be times oh, where yeah. she would cook you know or i would cook you know and we'd have like these sort of um you know uh just always hang out and sit on the roof together and stuff and go to shows and you know, she was, um, I, th I think we must have lived next to each other from 2015 right through till 2020. So, yeah, about five years, five or six oh, years, something like that. Yeah, yeah. you know, she, she was talking about Hawaii. She goes, Chris, we got to go to Hawaii. We should, we should just go there and just, like, write music <laughs> there, create an album there. And I'm like, yeah, you should. <laughs> hey. You know what? Me too. I want to come too. I want to come yeah, right I know. out of I, Hawaii. I'm you know, I'm I'm thinking right now, right? Something is brewing in my mind right now about about you guys all coming to Hawaii. <laughs> I just you know what we, we should we should do it we should do it we'd love to. I yeah. think uh, it's, I think it's always. <laughs> I mean, Andy spoke about it. We spoke about it, and we we're like, oh, we've got to have Hawaii on the tour dates. And I was like, yes, I've never been. You know, so yeah, yeah. Uh, then, then so then you know. So, so I mean, maybe, maybe, um, maybe hmm. need to uh, make that happen at some point. Yeah. But yeah, that'll be cool. And especially with Dexy and those guys, you know, they, they are, like you say, they're just really, yeah, they're really good people. Really good people. Great band. And just, um, yeah, it was always good fun living next door to each other. So, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I think that's very possible. And uh, we Hawaii loves the Smiths. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a tribute band here. They're my friends. They're called the Smites. And okay, uh, cool. when Andy passed away, we did a little party for a little tribute party for Andy, you know. And uh, oh wow, um, yeah, cool. I mean that's how far. I mean Andy was was here, you know. He stepped on the grounds of Honolulu, of Hawaii, and uh, yeah. So um, it was very special. So wow, so it's so wonderful to to have you, Cav, and you know to talk about these these special memories, which is such a special interview, you know, for me. Thank you. Well, thank you. No, no, I genuinely appreciate you having me on. And, you know, it's always, it's always good to talk about, you know, um, feels good to talk about him and, you know, what he was doing and just felt, you know, it, it's, yeah, I feel like it's honoring his, um, his uh, work, his memories, his um, legacy. In the, yeah. You know, um, you know yeah. one thing I remember about Andy is that he loved good food. You know, oh, like quality oh, yeah. food. Him and Francesca, they just they, they and they knew exactly what was what was quality food. You know, some people just yeah. care, but they were really yeah. they were foodies. You know, they love to eat, they love to drink good wine. To you know, it's just it's, it flows with 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 me because <laughs> I'm the yeah, same. No, page. definitely. So, uh, I, I'm on the same page as well. I love it. I mean, that was one of the things we used to do. We used yeah. to just hang out and eat in different restaurants together. I'd take him to places, you know, when I, the last time I saw him in New York, he hadn't been out for a while. And he had this like, um, I think it was a, Mor yeah, it was a Moroccan restaurant and him and Francesca took me to this restaurant and it was one of his favorite places. And, you know, the food was amazing. And another time fairly recently this year, you know, I was at his place and he was just going through all his ingredients and we would just like talk about food a lot we both loved it you know we both loved uh talking about food and ingredients and just you know making different types of dishes and stuff so uh yeah it was uh it was definitely a passion for us for us all oh man oh yeah so missed yeah you know, I'm, so, I'm so glad you're you're, you're carrying the blitz vega legacy and andy Bork forward and you and uh and I think it's going to be, I, I think it's going to be successful, you know. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm, we're looking forward to the release. And uh, and uh, thank you so much for, um, you know, if somebody wanted to to reach out or to or to find out a little bit more about Blitz Vega, how can they, uh, what was, is there? Um, just, just go on to the, um, like, I mean, uh, the Instagram is just at Blitz Vega. And then my Instagram is just Cav K A V Blaggers, which is B L A G G E R S. So um, yeah, so um, you know people can reach reach um, reach me on there. Um, I do check um, okay. the messages as well. Um, so, oh, the link. so you know, yeah, I, I I think we just really appreciate people who you know like. Uh, kind of enjoy listening to the music it means that you're oh, doing yeah. something I mean, you know yeah so um 
yeah, that's kind of it. But we'll be announcing the stuff we're doing in the album release. And um, yeah, this is the first time I've uh, probably announced a date, but 23rd of February will be the um, yeah, release date for the record. So. And, the, and then and then the and then the live shows, right? We'll follow. Yeah, then the live shows. And, and we might book more. We'll just see. We'll just see if there's interest. We'll we'll go there. If people want us to come and play, then we'll go and play. It's yeah. really that simple. So. Wow. Yeah. OK, well, I know it's going to be out there and uh, I will be sure to put the link on the bottom. And uh, anything else you want to say about uh, any other uh, projects or anything you're doing outside of Las Vega? Um, no, I, I mean, not really. I, I, I mean, uh, yeah, it's all kind of Blitz Vega. We started this record label, Feature Sonic, which is kind of to facilitate the releases of the Blitz Vega material. And um, and yeah, that's it. Taking it out there and just doing some, putting on some events and mm -hmm. that's it. But it's all kind of all, all around the Blitz Vega stuff. So it's just 100% focus on making making that um sort of get to a point where it's out there it's released and we get to honor andy's um you know the songs he worked on and that's kind of that's kind of it and yeah. then you know who knows what will happen after that who knows would, would, would you ever cover um a, a smith song um yeah i, I mean I don't know I, I, <laughs> I mean i guess if so I, I guess if um someone else was singing it you know <laughs> so uh um but yeah I mean um I suppose, we always spoke about how soon is now you know Andy was always like oh we could do that um that would suit the band um but mm -hmm. yeah I mean some girls you know bigger than others was uh his personal favorite that he wanted to wanted us to bigger than others yeah yeah Oh, yeah. so, so he, he 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 wanted he wanted to do that one a um, few times you know but they were, we're always sort of jamming in the um you know jamming <laughs> jamming you know lots of tracks in the rehearsal rooms and stuff and you know he wasn't he didn't hold back going into his uh, legendary bass lines and stuff and then you know uh before you know it you're kind of um uh, you know uh, just into uh yeah, whatever. I mean, he would he would literally fly through his bass lines, whatever mood he had. So, yeah, may, may, I, I don't know. I don't know. Only if we could do it justice, it would yeah. mainly be yeah. So, I mean, there's so many very... there's so many people that covers Smiths, right? And then they have all these records that come out. I collect them because I'm a Smiths fan. And you know, if anybody yeah. says bad things about the Smiths, I just cut them off. My friends, friends, <laughs> I said, don't you say bad things about it. No, the Smiths really <laughs> is up there in the. Oh, no, no, what a band, though, you know, what a band. I mean, some of the guys in our <laughs> band in Blitz Vega, they're such, like, Greg, our, one of our guitar players, you know, for him, the Smiths are the Beatles, you know, to him. You know, like, people feel about the Beatles, that's how he feels about the Smiths, you know. And uh, it was really funny because when um, when we first, I think we had, like, one of our first rehearsals and stuff, and he was like, you know, and him and Andy got on really well friends but he he would be like um he just told him you know and andy's like what what how can you say that <laughs> but he was just uh that was just andy but um yeah so um yeah i mean people are really really passionate about that band and i think um i mean i love that band but um yeah people like greg in the band are like right they are the band and then everyone else comes after that right yeah, you know, I, I noticed you're friends with Shauna, too, of Shameless Promotion PR. <laughs> you're friends with Shauna. I, I, I... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't spoken to her for years, actually. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she, yeah she's, she's amazing. Yeah, so um, well, one of one of the songs I, I just did interviewed with this guy in, uh, from Persian Leaps, he, he, he covered Gene, which is... Uh, oh, wow. Was, yeah, it's one of those B-sides, B right, to this from Charming. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I remember Andy specifically when when I played the version of Sandy Shaw. Yeah, I remember Andy made a comment about it because he was listening. He goes, "Sandy Shaw," and I'm like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, and I ever since then I just remember, and that song became that one of my number one. I love that version. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so there's just so many good memories, you know. But yeah. thank you for sharing this very special time 
with you know sharing all the special things you you did with Andy and his legacy. I mean, it will always live on. It will always live on. I'll and I'll make sure of it as long as I'm a DJ. <laughs> uh, yeah, he'd be happy with that, definitely. Uh, he'll be watching in heaven, going, "Hmm, I'll be watching." Yeah, it, he exactly <laughs> like that. Actually, he's done a great impression there. He would be going. Mm. <laughs> 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 no, no, that that was actually Andy. Yeah, right. Cool. Oh, yeah, right, well, you, thank you. I, I I really appreciate the time. Yeah, you know, you, you, any, you, anytime you want to chat about, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah you, you, you know, you have you have an amazing energy as well. So I can see why you're friends. You know, I mean, uh, uh, he, he picked and choose, you know, like special people, you know. He really is new. He knew, like, who's a good yeah. person. He just triggered. He just knew. I just, uh, that's Andy. Because he's a good, he's a good man, you know. He's yeah, good, yeah. So are you. Yeah. And, uh, Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for being for being uh, on the show. And I'm looking forward to the release and uh, the future things that you're going to be doing, also as well with your projects and everything. Good luck with everything, and thank your... you. Thank you so much.